The Hogan Rebellion of 1156 pitted father against son, uncle against nephew, and brother against brother. It started the famous rivalry between two warrior clans, the Taira and the Minamoto, and it was a sign that change was coming to Japan, wrapped in armor and on the backs of horses. It was called the Hogan no Rang, or Hogan Rebellion, or Hogan Disturbance. Hogan was just the name of the era that it happened in. On the surface, it was a succession dispute, as always. Someone wanted the throne and tried to seize it, but below, bigger forces lurked. It involved three different power centers of the Japanese courts, the imperial family, the Fujiwara clan, and the warrior clans of Taira and Minamoto. The Hogan Rebellion was at its core a battle between the imperial faction, people who wanted the imperial house to rule the Japanese court, as it should, and the Fujiwara Regency faction, people who wanted the Fujiwara clan to rule the court as regents, as it should. Regents were people who made decisions on behalf of the emperor. The Fujiwara had previously used this title to basically turn the emperor into a figurehead. Okay, I have a lot of names to ram down your ear hole, so let's take these three power centers one at a time. Things fit through holes more easily one at a time. Let's step into the halls of the Imperial House. Emperor Toba did not like his grandfather, Shirakawa. Shirakawa was an emperor in the Heian period who duked it out politically with the Fujiwara. The Fujiwara clan had dominated the Heian courts before Shirakawa came along and knocked them off their pedestal, kicking off a type of government rule called Insei, where authority did not lie with the Fujiwara or even the sitting emperor, but with emperors who had already stepped down and retired to a Buddhist monastery. Insei means cloistered rule or monastery rule. So when Shirakawa stepped down from his throne, he was still the boss in court. Emperor Toba, the frustrated, reigned for 16 years. 16 years of playing Super Smash Bros while his grandfather did adult emperor stuff. Now, ex-emperor Shirakawa had an adopted daughter of sorts. Her name was Fujiwara no Shoshi. At age 7, her biological father died, and Shirakawa took her in and raised her to adulthood. No one knew at the time the trouble Shirakawa's act of love would cause. She would later be known by her honorary title, Taiken Mon In. When she grew up, Shirakawa chose her to be Emperor Toba's primary consort. Toba was probably not happy that his grandfather controlled his life, but she was a total babe, so you know. Taiken Mon In did her wifely duties and bore him a son. And to show you how securely Toba was under his grandfather's thumb, Grandpa forced him to abdicate his throne in favor of the baby a baby of three years. The new baby emperor was named Emperor Stoku, and he was a cute little emperor, yes he is. Yes, this is the same Emperor Stoku that legend would later call one of Japan's three great vengeful ghosts. Currently, he's just a baby. As ex-emperor, Toba was still powerless before the might of Shirakawa and spent his days playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and directing his frustration at poor Yoshi. It was better than Super Smash Bros. Original, at least. Now, there's something we must know about Emperor Stoku for us to understand what Toba later does to him. Stoku was Toba's own son, but Toba did not seem to like him much, even though he did seem to be fond of his wife, Taiken Mon In. She was beautiful, and men could not help but stare at her two soft, smooth, humongous sleeves. They were spectacular sleeves. Turned out that might have been the problem, because a nasty rumor wafted through the halls of the Heian court that Stoku was not Toba's son, but the son of his grandfather, old ex-emperor Shirakawa. If you haven't thrown up yet, then you get an F because you haven't been paying attention. It would mean that Shirakawa adopted Taiken Mon In, married her to his grandson Toba, and then put his child in her belly. His adopted daughter's belly. Calm down, Woody. We don't know for sure if the rumors were true, but Taiken Mon In's reputation as a harlot certainly did not help. When Shirakawa finally kicked the bucket, ex-emperor Toba dropped his controller and got to work replacing grandpa's allies with his own. Outside of grandpa's shadow, Toba turned out to be a strong leader himself, though he had a quirk of calling his enemies Yoshi. He must have believed those nasty rumors because one day he told his son, Yoshi, you need to retire so my other son can become emperor. My name is Stoku, said Emperor Stoku, but his dad had already left. Emperor Stoku retired, and the new guy was Emperor Konoe, 
whose only important accomplishment was that he later died. Now, as junior retired emperor, Stoku was in the same position Toba was in, overshadowed by a stronger retired emperor. Stoku didn't lie down, though. He sought allies and pushed for his son to be the next emperor, and also asked for his stapler back. But when Emperor Konoe died, he was always sick. Toba enthroned another son of his from Taiken Mon-in, who became Emperor Go Shirakawa. Go Shirakawa is going to be a big player in this. The Go here translates to later, so it means the later Emperor Shirakawa, or Shirakawa II. Ex-Emperor Stoku felt abandoned by his own father and realized that his line would never regain the throne. He had to do something. Why live a cushy ex-emperor life at all if your line can't continue on the throne? Okay, now let's leave the imperial house for a bit and step into the Fujiwara house. Besides the power struggle happening in the imperial family, there was another power struggle going on within the Fujiwara family. The Fujiwara had already lost its domination of the Heian court thanks to Emperor Shirakawa, but it was still a strong clan and they wanted their power back. Two brothers competed for leadership of the clan, the older Fujiwara no Taramichi and the younger Fujiwara no Yorinaga. Their father, who was born without a name, because I've had it up to here with remembering names for this video, their father was the head of the clan. Although big brother Taramichi was the oldest, their father favored the little brother, Yorinaga. Yorinaga was set to become the head of the family after his father. He skyrocketed through the ranks of the court, and the position of regent was within his grasp. But that didn't mean Taramichi lost. When the sickly Emperor Konoe died, Taramichi accused his little brother Yorinaga of killing the emperor by sorcery. Yep, he said Yorinaga performed a magical ritual by sticking needles into the eyes of a statue of Emperor Konoe, causing Konoe to die. Ah, the old needle-in-the-eye routine. I remember this college party once where we all did that. Except we didn't use needles, and we didn't stick them in eyes. Just kidding, I didn't go to parties. Just kidding, I didn't go to college. Just kidding, I don't remember things. Emperor Konoe was really sick when he died. Probably was coughing up blood and stuff. To look at him at that moment, it must have been an eyesore sorcery. In his grief, ex-emperor Toba believed the accusations, and that kinda ruined little brother Yorinaga's relationship with Toba, and ruined Yorinaga's chances of rising anymore in court. But for big brother Taramichi, life was good. His younger brother was still the favorite son, but Taramichi fully joined the imperial faction and gained the favor of the imperial house. We can see the sides forming now. Yorinaga in the Fujiwara Regency faction, Taramichi in the Imperial faction. Which faction do you support? Let me know in the comments. Now so far we've only talked about court nobles, soft, pale, namby-pamby elites. A rebellion needs warriors. While they were beating the drums of war, the two sides also sought out the strongest warriors in the land. The warriors of clans Taira and Minamoto. But you gotta poke my huge subscribe button and my enormous bell to see what happens next, because that's a video for a later time. Hey, so if you requested a charm slash keychain, I've packaged them all and I'm starting to ship them out. If you didn't know, these charms are blessed by their kami. That's right, I put each Amaterasu charm in the sun for 7 days to receive Amaterasu's blessing. The Sukuyomi charms I placed under moonlight for 7 nights. And the Susano charms I threw into Hurricane Dorian. May they watch over you. Okay, the new patrons this week are Red Scar, Andrew Ramsey, Bolton, Tristan Fisher, Cody Tesh, Victoria Gates, AJ Owang, I'm sorry, Jennifer, just Jennifer, Ian Lugo, Savvy, Mount Hund, Plodium Shree, Sierra Herb, Vincent, I love you in Final Fantasy, Kimberly Blackwell, Eva Kumala, Karen Ramirez, Rowena Millicent, Michelle Navin, Tenko, Rabbit, and Ismail Valin, hey Izzy. Thank you so much, you guys. Also, thanks to the new patrons, Lil Infamy has leveled up. Yeah, he's beautiful. Hey, this playlist about the rise and fall of the Fujiwara seems to be popular. So if the next Hogan Rebellion video is not up yet, check this one out. Alright, much love, guys, and spread the knowledge.